Well, as we begin our, our time of worship, it's going to be a little bit different. And I, I think sometimes it's good to shake things up a little bit, right? Uh, rather than just put a song in front of you and, and sing, I would like to start with the trumpet. While I'm playing my trumpet, I would like you to worship the Lord. You know, he know he's here and he knows your very thoughts right now. You know, he cares about what's happening in your life right now. Did you know that he loves to hear from you? So many times in the scripture it says, call to me. I want to encourage you while I'm playing my trumpet, tell God every good thing you can think of about how you feel about your relationship with him. Maybe you're sitting here this morning and you don't have that close relationship. Why don't you just say, Lord, today, show me how to have that. Lord, I, wanna, I want to get to know you better today. When the words come up, on the screen, that's that's the indicator that I'd like you to sing along, all right? Worship the Lord.
Father, we ask that you would quiet our hearts today. We ask that you would um, prepare our hearts to hear a message that comes specifically from you. Uh, we pray that you'd use Don uh, to encourage us. We pray that you'd use Don to exhort us to, to live uh, in a way that would bring you honor and glory. Uh, Father, we pray that each and every aspect of um, this um, service today uh, would lead us into a closer relationship with you and would also bring you glory. And I pray these things in Christ's name. Amen. Are you guys ready to hear a trumpet today? Yes? All right. You must be because you sat right in the front. So no one gets to go to sleep today, I'll tell you. It is so good to be here this morning. Uh, and you can tell I'm relaxed. Why? Because you make me feel like I'm part of your family. And I appreciate that very much. Kathy and I have enjoyed coming here for I don't know how many years it is, but all I know is you've been with me pretty much since the beginning. And uh, you've, you've seen how our ministry continues to grow, and uh, you've been a part of that. And so immediately I want to say thank you so very, very much for, for your active role. And, uh, you know, we can't go unless we're sent. And we want to thank you for, for sending us. Um, you know, one of the, how many have never heard, or been to one of my concerts before or to one of my services before? All right. There's quite a few. So today I'm going to, I'm going to, give a little bit of a intro just to uh so we get to know each other um if it makes you feel any better if you raise your hand today i probably don't know you either so hopefully today we can we can take care of that leave as friends but uh i started playing trumpet when i was almost six years old and to me you'll, you say well he must be at least 50 i'm 66 so you think after that many years playing trumpet, I'd be better at it than I am. But, uh, you know, no one ever had to tell me to practice. Now, my, why do I play trumpet? Because my dad had a saxophone and an accordion, and those were his, and I wasn't allowed to touch them. But he had Grandpa's old trumpet up in the attic, and so that's what I learned on. And uh, as a matter of fact, I, I didn't even know when you press those buttons down, they were supposed to come up all by themselves again. I, I learned to play trumpet by the vice grip method. You press it down and pull it back up. And, uh, but yet, you know, as soon as I learned, like, faith of our fathers, my dad, the Sunday school superintendent, uh, got me up in front of the Sunday school and had me play faith of our fathers. Uh, as soon as I learned Jesus loves me, I was up in front of the Sunday school playing Jesus loves me. One of his favorite songs was, when the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. And uh, so as soon as I could get that song out, he wrote it out for me. And, uh, and I learned it, and then I started, he started calling his friends and saying, hey, listen, I have, a, I have a boy who plays trumpet, and how about letting him come play the offertory at your church? And so that's kind of how I started getting in front of people. My dad gave me a hymnal, and he said, play ten, start at the beginning and play 10 hymns a day. And uh, I did. I learned, a, I learned a lot of good hymns that way. And then uh, I, I didn't know it. He didn't tell me until I made it my, all the way through the hymnal. He said, okay, now you're going to learn to transpose. How many know what that means? Wow, a lot of musicians here. Transposing means when I look at a C, I have to play a D. I have to play everything up a step. And so he said, start all over in the hymnal, play 10 a day, and transpose every single one of them. So a lot of these songs were, it was like after a whole hymnal, they were brand new to me again. And not only did I have to play them, but I had to play them all up a step. That's, I'm just giving you some background. I didn't take that many lessons, but I like to play. And uh, I would play for my neighbors. If I saw them out in the front yard, I would get my horn out and I'd play for them. Could never figure out why they went in the house and shut the door and turned on the air conditioner until my dad played me a tape of what I sounded like back then. And uh, I think one of the nicest compliments I ever got was from those same neighbors. They said, you know, Donnie, we used to go in the house when you, when you used to practice because it was really bad. It sounded like a cow had moved into the neighborhood. But now when you practice, we get the lawn chairs out, and we like, to, we like to hear you practice. And I thought, well, that was pretty nice. And I'm always sensitive about my neighbors. I, I received a phone call when we lived in Wisconsin here from my neighbor, and, and uh, we had lived there for a few years already. And she called one day, and she said, Don, I need to talk to you about your trumpet playing. I'm thinking, oh, boy, what am I going to do? She said, ever since you 
built that practice studio over there and put air conditioning in. You close the windows so we can't hear you anymore. Will you open your windows so we can hear you once in a while? Dodge that bullet. So anyway, all that to say I liked playing trumpet. I still do. What I like about it now is that it's my foot in the door to a lot of places that would never allow me to come just to share news about Jesus. I get to go to African villages that are, are run by Muslim or voodoo people that are so honored that an American is there and so honored that I'm there with my instrument. And I tell them I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play Christian music and I'm going to talk about Jesus. And I do this all over the world. And they say, go ahead. And so we've been able to plant churches and, and villages that have never heard the gospel before. Um, if I would have just gone and said, listen, I want to come in and tell your people about Jesus, I probably wouldn't have got my foot in the door. But uh, you just never know how God is going to use what's in your hand uh, to his glory. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that a little bit later uh, because I want you to start thinking about what's in your hand. I play trumpet, all right? What can you use? What can you use? And, uh, and then hopefully by the end of today, you're going to say, Lord, here it is. I want to use it for you. Well, for me, it's a trumpet. And, uh, you know, one of the one of the areas that I really never thought that I'd be able to do ministry in because I didn't think they would need it is where Christianity began in Jerusalem and in Bethlehem. <laughs> uh, and yet I was able to do a mission trip to to the Holy Land and, and actually brought a team and uh, and do concerts and serve people that, that needed help in uh, in those those cities. And uh, I bought me a nice, neat little instrument while I was there. It's called a shofar. And uh, you know what I like about this is it's, it's a horn off an old dead kudu. It's an animal that wanders around Africa. Smells like an old dead kudu. Only plays about three notes. And yet, when it's used as a musical instrument, as a shofar, God uses it to, to draw people together to worship him all over the world. That encourages me because I am nothing more than a sinner saved by the grace of God. And there's days I think I don't have much to offer. But then I think, you know what? If God can use an old smelly horn <laughs> to his glory, I think I have more to offer than that. And, uh, and it's in interesting to me how I've been able to play this in, in so many different places. I played this there. Uh, can, can you imagine uh, playing from the Mount of Olives? towards the, the city of Jerusalem, blowing the shofar. There were people on the sidewalk thinking they're going to start flying, uh, that the rapture was taking place or something. And then uh, I, I played this at the walls of Jericho. Well, kind of. It didn't work. The walls were already down. Uh, someone else beat me to it. But uh, when I think about that day when the trumpet's going to sound, when Jesus is coming back and we're going to meet him in the air, I think the sound could be more like this than what I played you just a little bit ago. Uh, this is a God-made trumpet. And if, if there's an angel going to be playing an, a, a trumpet, maybe it would be something that God has made himself. All right? So let's, uh, let's think about what if it were today? What if all of a sudden you heard a, so a sound something like this? First time it's had a hiccup at the end. Uh, what if? What if it sounded something like that? What if it were today? Would you be ready for that? You know, many years ago, I can tell you I grew up in the church, knew a lot of the answers, and there was a part of me that wanted to love and serve God, but there was a bigger part of me that just was more interested in helping myself out. And I uh, lived that way for many years, and finally one day I just 
realized that God loved me so much that he was continuing to reach out to me. He was continuing to offer me forgiveness. You see, the Bible says if you confess your sins, he's faithful. He's righteous to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all, all unrighteousness. And I remember the day very well where I just said, God, I'm so sorry. Please forgive me. And Lord, if you can still use me, show me where. Now, isn't that funny, talking to God, saying, if you can. He already said he would. But I said, Lord, if you can still use me, show me where. And that's when the doors began to open. Um, today, I believe that I'm here because God has appointed today's meeting. I believe that God has led in our lives that so today, one more time, he can tell you how much he loves you and how much he desires that you know him in a personal way. You see, someday there is going to be something happen. I don't know if it's going to be a blast of a trumpet like that. Maybe the sound that we'll hear will be God's voice himself, and, and the only way that they could write it was the sound of a trumpet. All I know is there's going to be a loud noise, and the dead in Christ are going to rise. And from that point forward, our eternity begins. And what you need to be thinking about today is where is that eternity going to be? It was just a few weeks ago I was in this room, and uh, Don Gilbertson, his casket was right, right in front of this. People got up and they began to talk about him. And, and one of the things that I really appreciated about everything that they said was he was a man of integrity. In other words, he was a guy that when they knew him, they knew there was something about him that was right. And some people recognized that that was Jesus Christ in his life. You know, we want to live that kind of example that all we say and all we do represents Christ to those around us. Because someday there's going to be a loud noise. We don't know when that day is going to come. Uh, Jesus said, watch for things like break, great outbreaks of disease. Huh. Pestilences, all right? He says, when you see those things happening, when you see earthquakes, when you see a nation rising against nation, kingdom against kingdom, when you see those things happening, he says, that's not, doesn't mean they're coming right now, but it means the day's coming soon. My question is, if you heard that noise today, would you be ready? What if that was it? All of a sudden, you're standing before the throne of God, and eventually he pulls out that book of life, and he starts calling us by name. Is your name written in that book of life? If not, why don't you take care of that today, all right? This was one of my dad's favorite songs, When the Roll is Called Up Young. trumpet of the Lord shall sound and time shall be no more and the morning breaks eternal bright and fair when the saved of earth shall gather over on the other shore and the road 
Jesus called up yonder, I'll be there. those hands worship the lord with them all right go ahead when we all get to heaven what a day of rejoicing that will be again i hope your name is written in that book of life because i'd love to see heaven be as crowded as possible i talked about don a little bit ago I, it kind of reminds me of a story i heard years ago someone was talking about they were, they were actually being baptized and they were sharing their testimony and uh this lady was talking about how she came to know Christ. And she said, there was this lady at work. And she was going through all kinds of problems. I knew what her personal problems were uh, at home and her physical problems and so forth. And, and yet, she would come to work every day with such a smile and such a radiance. It drove me crazy. She said, finally, one day, I said, what? She said, I know you. What is it about you that has you so happy all the time? And the lady said, well, I'm glad you asked. I know Jesus Christ in a personal way. I know that he will never leave me. He'll never forsake me. He will never let me down. No matter what I'm going through, he will see me through it. This lady said, tell me more. <laughs> and she said, that day I put my trust in Jesus Christ. I still don't understand it all, but I know that I needed a Savior. I knew that I had sinned, and I needed forgiveness, and, and I accepted his gift of eternity. He died for my sins. He rose again. I can talk to him right now, and she said, I'm still learning, and I'm excited today to tell you that I am a believer in Jesus Christ. And I thought, that lady's she's got more than a little light. She's got a torch. She loves Jesus Christ in a way that, that kind of rekindled me uh, to want to, uh, to be more bold in sharing my faith with others. That's why songs like this next one, uh, they just stick around. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine. I'm going to let it shine, this little light of mine. I'm going to let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. I'm going to let it shine.
I saw the light. You know, it's a little bit of a Dixie at the end there. That, that, that. Well, we moved to Virginia, all right? And so, um, uh, you, you play those songs down there, and it's like you're playing the national anthem. I'll tell you, like when the roll is called up yonder or I'll fly away, those songs are just uh, standard still. And uh, so it's kind of fun to go down and play the old hymns, songs that I know, and they know them too. Uh, it's getting harder and harder these days. Uh, to, to find songs that are familiar in, in all the different churches. And when you play an instrument, that uh, you got to be very selective trying to find songs that people might recognize. Um, just to catch you up, uh, yes, we moved to Virginia. Uh, people told us that building a house would be the most trying things you can ever go through in a marriage. And Kathy and I laughed at them. We've been married 47 years. It can't be that bad. Hey, Kathy. <laughs> she, she's still with me. <laughs> but it, it's been a tough year. It's been a tough year. Um, we were going to try to keep our Wisconsin home and uh, build a home in Virginia. People ask, why? Why did you move to Virginia? Um, I would like to tell you that I heard the voice of God saying, Don, move to Virginia. It's not the way it worked. But there were many subtle things that happened. One was a friend of mine in Virginia, where I've been doing concerts now for about 20 years, uh, but a friend of mine there um, gave me 23 acres right in the mountains, beautiful. You can't even find pieces like a property like this for sale. And he just said, Don, I, I want you for a neighbor. If I give it to you, would you use it? And I said, yes. But I thought, you know what? I've been driving to the south in the winter, uh, for many years and, and living up north, maybe I could just live in the south and live in the north too. We'll keep our house. And, but I said, Kathy, what would you say if someone just walked up the driveway and made us a full offer on the house? A full offer was more than it was appraised for, all right? And uh, Kathy said, well, that would take an act of God. Nothing sells up here. It was sold within a week. Someone actually just called us. We didn't tell anyone we were even slightly interested in selling. Someone called and said, Don, we hear you're building a house, and we'd like to buy your house. Is it for sale? And I said, no, not really. I said, but if you want to talk, we can. And we talked, and they said, can we look at it? Well, then I knew they weren't going to buy it. We had had a flood the winter before during the thaw, and I had all the carpeting ripped up. I ripped the walls off in the basement. Uh, it was a mess, and then mice had found their way in, and I had mouse traps all over the house, and uh, and we had left, and I wasn't thinking about leaving how I left the mouse traps. There were dead mice decaying in the mouse traps. No way are we going to sell that house. They called the next day and made us a full offer. You know what I said? You know, let me pray about this. <laughs> Kathy went. We already discussed this. <laughs> I said, you know what? I don't need to pray about this. This is just God at work. And so, okay, we agree to it. Little did we know how hard it would be to move after 24 years living in the same place, how much stuff you accumulate. And it was a lot of square footage. And, uh, and then trying to build a house a 1,000 miles away, uh, absolutely a nightmare. No sooner had we signed the contract the, the, with the uh, builder and lumber, plywood went from $20 to $80 a sheet. Uh, and so instead of the small mortgage we thought we were going to have, we ended up with a giant mortgage. And all the while, we're, we're just wondering, God, why? Yeah, the house sold. We said it would take an act of God. Yeah, we got the property for free, but, but Lord, we are absolutely miserable. Lord, we don't have the energy to be able to do this. And, uh, you know, God just kept doing amazing things, seeing us through, giving us help when we needed help. And uh, then it was moving day, and we were packing up the U-Haul to the very minute we had to be out of the house for closing. And all of a sudden, seller's remorse set in. And I pulled out of the driveway, and I was crying like a baby. Just tears flowing down my cheeks, and I'm pouring my heart out to God. And I'm saying, God, I had great neighbors here. Lord, I don't know why I'm moving. Lord, this has been miserable. Lord, this is so much harder than I thought it was going to be. Lord, is this the biggest mistake I've ever made? 
and I was listening to Christian radio, WRVM radio uh, up north, and all of a sudden, I'd no sooner said, Lord, is this the biggest mistake I've ever made? And the radio announcer said, and now, here's Don Shire on his trumpet playing the song, Jesus Led Me All the Way. I don't know about you, that gives me goosebumps even right now thinking about it. God loves me so much that when the guy that put the program together was picking out songs, he chose a song. I've never had my music minister to me before, all right? He used my song to minister to my heart. You know what? We're still trying to figure it out. We're still trying to get moved in. We st- and by the way, it was the worst move ever. We had hired a moving company. There's still things missing uh, that we'll never see again. Uh, they hijacked our stuff, held it for ransom, ended up having to pay a lot more for the move. It was everything. That's why I was crying. I'm thinking, what have I done? And then all of a sudden, right in that, instant. God said, Don, I've got this. Jesus led me all the way. You know, it's a song that I've recorded a long time ago, and I very rarely have I used it in public. I put together a short video to it, and uh, I'm going to play through the song. The first part, I just want you to see the words uh, because they're pretty cool, uh, about Jesus leading us. And then The second half of the song will be just pictures of where God has led us through the years.
pretty exciting when you see God leading and God answering and God protecting. I'm here today to tell you God doesn't love me anymore. He loves you. Did you know that? I remember once Kathy said, Don, why do you even say that? Everyone knows that. Sometimes you just need to be reminded. You came here to worship him today. He's here. He cares about what's going on in your life right now. His desire is that we become his ambassadors. That when people see us, they see him living through us. I was in Haiti one time and this pastor was driving his pickup truck down the hill and I had a team with me and they were all in the back of the pickup truck. I was up front and we're going down this hill and this is an old rickety pickup truck and all of a sudden, bam, flat tire, blowout. You know what the first words that came out of his mouth were? Ooh, praise the Lord. I'm thinking, that's not what I would have said. That was an example to me. A few days later, we were, we were building a, an addition onto his church. A few days later, one of his elders was leaning on a, on a pile of, I don't know if they were two by sixes or what they were, a big pile of wood up along the wall. And all of a sudden, the whole pile went crashing over. And the elder went, Ooh, praise the Lord. I thought, no, where did he learn that? One of the scariest things that happens to me is when someone comes up that knew me years ago and says, hey, Don, because I know that they saw things in my life that did not reflect a close relationship with God. Matter of fact, I had a friend one time, he said, Don, we went to high school together. I remember you sat there and watched me do drugs. I was searching for answers, and I just listened to your concert, and you grew up in a Christian home? How is it that we could be friends, and I was looking for answers, and you never said a word? I don't share that because I'm proud of it. I shared it. I can, tell you, I can tell you that my response to him was, all I can tell you is I don't want anyone to ever ask me that question again. <laughs> you see, it's so much more rewarding when someone says, you know, Don, went with you on a mission trip. And I thought I was a Christian because I was a good person. But I watched you. And I listened to you, and I gave my life to Christ. And now my life has changed. Had a prisoner, a guy said, I'm, he came up to me at a church not that long ago, sat next to me. And he said, Don, you probably don't know who I am, but you came to the prison. And I went to the chapel service for good points, for good behavior. And I heard about Jesus for the first time. He said, I just want you to know it changed my life. He said, I just wanted to come up here and thank you. I'm out now, and I'm doing well. I was at another church, and a guy came up, and he said, uh, he said, you don't know me, but you came to my prison. He said, I used to look forward to you coming every year, but now I'm out. And he, I, got, I have a job, and he said, I want to start supporting your ministry. You know, sometimes you wonder, is any of this working? Is anyone listening? You know, I, I'm standing here right now wondering, is anyone listening to what I'm, I'm saying today? I hope so because I prayed for that today. Kathy and I were in India, and I had been told to lay low that they were persecuting Christians and that my name was on their bad guy list. How did I know that? Well, the guy that I work with in India got called into the government office and they said, why are you bringing Americans over here to do uh, meetings in the streets and, and to tell people about Jesus? And he said, what are you talking about? And they pulled up my Facebook page. 
And he said, oh, <laughs> when he talked to me, he said, Don, don't put anything on Facebook this time. But I wondered if they would let me in the country. And, and uh, sure enough, the computer started dinging when they scanned my passport. And the guy looked at me and wrote down some stuff in the computer, but he, he let me through. And uh, so I, I realized that we might be being followed, that I might have to be a little bit more careful on this trip. And uh, as Kathy and I were traveling, some of our children go to a school, a private school. The uh, reason they go to a private school is a public school. The, even the teacher made fun, fun of the kids because they were orphans. Private school, they don't make fun of them because we were paying. And uh, they like the money coming in. But uh, so we had about 25 of our kids going to that school. And uh, we just stopped by. I wanted to say hi. And the, the headmaster said uh, he was so glad to see us. He said, he said would, you, uh, would you speak to our students today? play your trumpet for the students? And I said, sure. I remember Kathy said, Don, what are you going to say? And I said, well, I'm going to tell them how much God loves them. <laughs> and I did. I, I told the guy ahead of time, I said, now, you know I'm a Christian, right? He says, yes. And I said, when I play my trumpet, I'm going to be playing Christian music, and when I talk, I'm going to be talking about my Christian faith. And he said, well, we're a school. This is a Hindu guy, by the way. He said, we're a school. They need to learn about the religions of the world so you can teach them about your religion today. What an open door. And so I did. I, I told them about how important decisions are that we make in our lives. I told them about how even today how, the, how important the decisions were that they were making, how some of them came to school and they just wanted to goof off. They come because their parents make them come. And some come and they study hard. I said, now the ones that don't study, I want you to look at the ones that do study because someday you'll be working for them. The teachers like that one. They, they all gave a nice applause for that one. And uh, I said, yes, life is full of decisions. I said, how many of you think that, that uh, I said, I'm a Christian and, and I, I, I'm going to teach you today about my, my Christian faith. How many of you think that Christianity started in America? They all raised their hands. I said, did you know and I told him about who Jesus was, the Son of God. God became man, and how he lived right down the road. <laughs> and how he sent, a couple thousand years ago, how he sent one of his personal followers to India to tell them how much he loved them. I told him about Thomas how Thomas traveled to India and how he was martyred, killed for his faith. I said, you know, God loves you so much he sent Thomas 2,000 years before we even heard about Jesus of the United States. He was reaching out to India to tell you how much he loves you. And God loves you so much today that he's brought me all the way from the United States here to India to tell you today and remind you how much he loves you. And I tried to help him understand what sin was and how, how we all need to be forgiven and how Jesus paid the penalty for that sin. And I said, so today you get to make another decision. You can decide to reject what I've told you or you can decide to accept this gift of eternity. And I asked them, out of respect for who God is, I want you to bow your heads. And they did. And I said, if you would like to make that decision, decision today to accept Jesus as your Savior, talk to him with words like this. And I tried to lead them in a very simple prayer of repentance. God, I'm sorry for the sin of my life. And I've never been forgiven by you. And I accept your gift of forgiveness. Thank you for providing a way for me to go to heaven. And I'm putting all of my trust in you. And I said, while your heads are still bowed, if you prayed that prayer today, would you just raise your hand? Would you know that half the teachers raise their hands along with students all over the room? 
And afterwards, here comes the headmaster. Mr. Don, I want to talk to you. And I said, okay. He said, this is my wife and this is my daughter. Would you pray for us? In front of the whole school, they bowed their heads and asked us to pray over them. And I prayed that that light would go on <laughs> for him, that he would have an, a clear understanding of what it means to know Jesus, to know God in a personal way. Afterwards, he told the pastor that I work with there, he said, Pastor, can I come to the orphanage on Christmas Eve and pass out presents <laughs> and celebrate Christmas with you? And would you come back at Christmas time and read the Christmas story to all of our students? You know, when I heard all of this, I was reminded of that very simple prayer. Lord, if you can use me, show me where. My question to you today is, are you willing to say that same prayer? Maybe it needs to start out with, Lord, I need your forgiveness. And Lord, I'm putting my trust in you. And Lord, I don't understand everything about this, but I know I need forgiveness. Today, Lord, I'm putting my trust in you. Teach me. And maybe there's others that are saying, Lord, I remember I prayed this many years ago, but I have not been living that kind of life. Lord, forgive me. Lord, if you can still use me. Don't say, if you can. He's God. He already said he would. Lord, please use me. Show me where. We have a little girl at our orphanage in Haiti. I'm going to skip through a few things here. Some of the kids that are brought to us, like Eliana, we don't even know where she comes from. She was abandoned, starving to death. She's now in a home where she's loved. She's cared for. A week later, New Year's Eve, this little girl was brought to us. Her grandmother brought her. She said, my daughter's special needs doesn't know what's really what's going on and someone raped her. And uh, she had a baby, and I can't take care of even my daughter. Would you take this baby? The baby has special needs. Look at that smile. She's loved. When this baby was born, the mother took off running. As soon as she was able to leave she, the hospital, she just abandoned this little girl. Bianca doesn't have eyes. She doesn't have ears. She has a brain the size of a pea. And she has a severely cleft palate. When the hospital called us, they said, this little girl's going to die soon. But would you take her? We can't do anything for her. When they brought her to us, she didn't even move. She was like, like in a coma. You see, she had never been held. Our staff held her and loved her. And she began to respond. They said she wouldn't last very long. She's over three years old now. I don't know what goes on in that little brain. But I can tell you that she knows she's loved. One of her favorite things is sitting in a swing, swinging back and forth. She'll sit there all day. Can't see, can't hear. I don't know what she's experiencing other than love. There's times I say, Lord, why do you allow this? Why is there so much pain and suffering in the world? Why was this little girl born the way she was born? You know what? God has not told me in a loud voice what his reasons are for the why he does things and the way he does things. But I can tell you this. This little girl has ministry to everyone that comes to visit that, that home. This little girl is loved. She is no longer abandoned. And she will be loved until she sees Jesus face to face. Rubenson had never walked on his own before. 
You're seeing him take his first steps. We found him a walker. The guy didn't sit down the whole day. But now you're going to see him a year later. I don't need no stinking walker. He's going to scare you like he scared me. He's going to go down the stairs. He now wears elbow pads, knee pads, and a helmet. But he never slows down. And his smile is a mile wide. The kids love to worship. They, get, they put on the best of what they have, and they come together. That little girl in the blue chair, when I first saw her, she just kind of looked at the ceiling and drooled, didn't respond much. And it amazed me when they took this picture. They, they caught her raising her hands in the middle of worship. <laughs> Amazing. We got them guitars. They learn one chord. Every song they sing is in one chord. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Nelfa, I've told you about Nelfa before. Those of you that that have been to my services, uh, she's she's just a wonderful little girl. Last time I was there, I had my iPad, and she wanted to talk to Kathy. And her mind is fine, but her body is all twisted. Her body doesn't obey what her brain tries to tell her body to do. So even when she tries to talk, for, you know, her jaw will strut out, or she tries to sing, and her face gets all distorted because... It's just not obeying the signals from the brain. But one thing that obeys is that smile. She's always smiling. Her dad put her in an intersection so that she could get run over by traffic. He no longer wanted her in the home. And she will tell you, my dad, he was ashamed of me. He wanted me to die. And she said, I was crying to God, and I was screaming for help, and God knows me. He heard me because Pastor Dari, the pastor that runs our orphanage, came walking by and picked her up and brought her home, and she hasn't stopped smiling. She says, now I have a home, and I have a family, and they love me. God loves me. He knows me. She wanted to sing a song for Kathy. And so she sang this song. God is so good. God is so good. God is so good. He's so good to me. Sang it in English. Nelfa, what do you want to do when you grow up? You see, our, our residents are never going to leave us for the most part. <laughs> They're with us until the Lord takes them home. And I said, Nelson, what do you want to do when you grow up? And she says, I want to be a nurse. And I want to help people just like me. And I said, Nelson, I don't know if you can ever be a nurse or not. But how about if we start giving you nurse jobs here at the home? And she got so excited. The last time I saw her, she was sitting over a few of our children that are paralyzed from the neck down with a rag in her hand, her twisted hand with a rag brushing flies off of their faces, trying to help keep the flies off of them, singing. You see, Nolfa figured out that you can have a rag in your hand and use it for the Lord. Kind of started with this today. What is in your hand? What is God going to use in your life this week? As you talk to him this morning and say, Lord, use me. What I can tell you is I, say, I said that simple prayer and here I am 35 countries later. <laughs> Is God going to send you to 35 countries? I don't know. I can tell you God also sent me next door.
Are you willing to be his light? Are you willing to let the light of Christ shine through you today? We are here today because 12 guys did what they were told <laughs> to the point of suffering and death. You want me to take a stand for what you believe in? I can tell you, Nelta, she will. I'm going to close with this last song. You're going to see some of our kids, including Nelta. They grew up about a mile away from the ocean, had never seen it before. And we took them to the beach. You want to see pure joy. <laughs> Wait till you see the look on Nelta's face at the end of this video. But while I'm doing this song, please talk to God. If you need to make some things right, make them right. If you have any questions, talk to me afterwards, all right?
again, I thank you for sending us. We can't go unless we're sent. And so, uh, again, I say thank you so much. Um, by the way, Kathy will be over here by this table. Um, I know it looks like Walmart moved in. Um, the shawls, the purses, the scrunchies, the, the friendship bracelets are all made by widows and orphans uh, from India that we support. And all the money from that goes back to them. All right? So if you'd like to do a little Christmas shopping, um, stop by the table. Also, uh, I have some of my CDs here. If you want one, just give me whatever you want for it, all right? I usually sell them, but uh, today, if, I just want to be in your home, all right? So if you, uh, you want to take a CD, just give me whatever the Lord leads you to give, and I'm not going to watch. It doesn't matter, and uh, I'll, I'll be honored that you wanted to take it home. Look forward to fellowshipping with you in just a few minutes. Uh, please allow me to pray for you right now. Lord, I do thank you for how you lead in our lives. Lord, I thank you for how you love us so much that you see to details. Lord, I thank you for your love that's extended to everyone in this room. Lord, I pray that they would experience that love. Lord, if they have any question of their relationship with you, Lord, through your Holy Spirit, speak to their hearts. Lord, help them to have an understanding of how much you love them. And Lord, for some strange reason, we, as believers, we, we get cold, we get lukewarm. And Lord, I pray, again, through your Holy Spirit, you would lead in our lives in such a way that that, that spark would get rekindled. Lord, that we would be the light that we should be for you to our community around us. Lord, I think of our staff in Haiti and in India. And Lord, right now, they're, they're hard places to serve. Lord, I ask for your protection over them. I thank you that COVID has not been an issue with any of our homes. We continue to ask for your protection from that, but especially from that evil one that would love to grab these kids and take away the foundation that we're trying to give them of knowing you. So we dedicate it all to you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.